Easy, I'm Scepter and you're tuned in to another Ableton Live tutorial. In today's lesson, we're gonna be looking at building up intros into a track that you've already written. So the important thing when you're doing it this way round is that your intro remains coherent to what you've got going on in the drop. So using some of the sounds you already have to you know, vibe out the intro and create something that's gonna work when the track drops. So we're already set up on this camera, so we'll dive straight into Ableton Live now. I'm gonna create a new um, folder track on the bottom and just get rid of yeah pretty much everything that's in the intro there before because that was just to vibe it out as I was writing it so like I said a minute ago using sounds that you've already got in the drop is really going to help you in terms of a coherent sound so we'll start off having a bit of a listen to what we've got going on and see what I can pick out and maybe make some intro uh, components with so let's just go to this main section here. Okay, so first of all, I'll take out a couple of the base sections. Those down there. Uh, let's see what I've got going on in the pads. So I've got a vocal stab which I'm definitely going to use. So I'll bring that one out. And some of the risers. Um, what else have we got? <laughs> Possibly this mid range layer that I've got for the sub. So I'll just resample that one out. Okay, now I know the track's in D. Um, I made the bass line out of a uh, just an 808 hit. So the key should be relatively consistent. Um, and the serum patch that I've got, pretty sure that's, yeah, that's a D as well. So let's get rid of this. Bit. So first of all, I'm going to wash most of the parts out um, with quite a lot of reverb to get uh, kind of drones out of them. And then we'll build up past that point. So we'll do the same with the vo vocal. I'll just use the Ableton reverb, which is good enough. and flatten that one and then chop the beginning bit off so I've just got vocal texture turn it up a little bit so we'll start off with this just copy that to fill up all the gaps 
and snip that bit off because that's where my where my drop path is. Might use that bit a little bit later on. Do the same with this bass hit. I'm going to use the same reverb um, just so the room size, even though it's really big, uh, the room size and settings are, are the same. So I've got a set of hats that are happening um, for 16 bars and then a filtered break that leads up to the drop. I'll leave those as they are for the time being. So what I'd like to do is have one of the uh, drones that I've got then lead into the other. to give it a bit of a tail that goes the other way as well. So we get rid of those. Uh, use this effects riser that I've got, uh, that I've used a bit later on anyway. Maybe have a delay uh, coming off the end of there. I don't want the click. And just automate the dry wet like I did with the reverb. same so at the moment I'm not really trying to create interest I'm just trying to create a sound palette and um, that's going to work and then we'll add extra elements as we go Um, add a little bit of extra interest to these vocal pads as well. Just use a little bit of auto pan. So we definitely need something to be going on in there. Thank 
somewhere but I'm not sure where it is. It is in there. the same delay uh, in there as well. this mid-range part that a little bit. So still quite bare, uh, definitely needs, I feel like it could do with another rhythmical element that's in the front here, because this gap, I don't really want to repeat this too many times, uh, and this gap seems a bit empty still. So maybe we could try using, if I resample some of the whole drum break, see if we can put some of that in there. Try not to use, you know, anything that I haven't got there already, um, unless I really have to. So first thing I'm going to do, which is quite an easy uh, old trick, is to create a like a sub sub kick reverb. So just use a long reverb tail, and then put a low pass filter after it.
the snare reverb I've got at the end. so much I think the first one works okay what I might even do is copy these hats in the beginning for the time being vocal I'm going to keep it as it is but just put a longer reverb tail on the end maybe a little bit of delay as well pads longer stabs even forward and then use the uh, mid-range part of the bass to lead into the drop instead but possibly have less less of them Use the kick again there, uh, possibly there as well. It seems like I might be overusing it, but you can't really hear it, or it's, it's not something that's a big part of your attention. reverb on here what we'll do duplicate that channel so I've just got an intro version of it
just sort of make the on off on that one. down as it builds. So let's see what we got on the hole at the moment. So I just put a little reverb uh, on the end of this filters, filtered break that I've got here. Uh, and again, automate. Uh, I'll automate the dry wet this time. So I highlighted uh, this little section here because I feel like we're doing all right up until this point, but here it needs something extra uh, to be leading into the uh, the break that comes in. So I'll just see what I've got. That could do actually. stretch it out a bit. That sort of thing. Uh, I actually quite like the way that the stretching algorithm has made it move around in the headphones a little bit. Could do with a bit more tops though.
maybe a little bit of overdrive to try and bring that out. Yeah, it might even automate the frequency as it goes. as well quite like that uh, mid-range bass that comes in to be a bit thicker so I might mix in a bit of the signal that's out of the drop if I can find it again just duplicate that so I've got it on a separate channel sound a bit strange let's see if I can do something just pop those in that folder uh, do something to get around that I might instead do that or maybe even happening somewhere that I can't remember no, it's just volume just to take some of the weight out of it as it builds up to the drop otherwise it's taking the impact away from the drop
Okay, so we're getting there now. Um, I think what the other thing could use is just a couple of musical elements, whether it be chords or um, stabs or something like that. Just pop that one in there as well. But so far, I've managed to get away with only using uh, a riser. So that's not bad going. Let's pop a serum, actually. I might even be able to make it out of this bit. record some chords in there. So I'm just looking for two uh, fairly complex waves to layer across the top.
Okay, and then on the intro as a whole. Just copying that, no. Just gonna see what's going on. Make sure I haven't got any too, uh, too many low frequencies in there. I don't. Um, maybe try to think what else I could add to it without making it overcrowded or putting something in there that isn't really necessary. Let's see. Just squash it all together a little bit. This uh, I've used this loads of times, but the in valve stuff just has a nice valve saturation to add a little bit of texture. Some reason I've lost the hats. Oh, I've turned them all off by accident. Why have I got something siloed? I oh, know that's why. So now that um, extra riser that I put in there is there, I'm going to take away that kick because it doesn't really sit, sit right anymore. this uh, reverbed hat on another track but just turn it down
Cool, yeah, so I think that will do. Um, could use yeah, something in there. Maybe just try turning that up. hat there let's do the same get rid of it on the other track Not 100% satisfied with it really, um, but for now it may have to do. like the timing of it isn't quite right but I don't know why um, yeah so then once you've finished your uh, intro as well what I do most of the time is this second then breakdown section that you've got in the middle the thing you can do you know first of all is just copy what you've got um, and carry it over to the other side let's get rid of that kick maybe introduce one of these pads a little bit earlier
hopefully that was insightful. I know there wasn't a lot of talking going on, but I wanted to try and show you the process of me doing it rather than me showing you one that's finished and then talking you through what I've done. Let me know if you, you find it more useful that way, watching me do it, or whether you find it easier, as I just said, the other way around. So thanks again for watching. Sorry, my camera just cut out at the end there. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully that was helpful to a few people. Let me know if you liked it in the comments and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.